Hey everyone, this is Paul Bertarelli reporting from the Diamond Aircraft Factory in London, Ontario. This place is really interesting for a couple of reasons. One, for what goes on here right now, building new modern airplanes, but also what went on here during World War II. This factory was started in the early 1940s, early part of the war, and it built two airplanes. The Westland Lysander, which was the world's first special operations airplane, and the famous de Havilland Mosquito. What's really interesting is the Mosquito, as you know, was made of wood, laid up laminations, and to a certain extent, that's still what they're doing here now with the Diamond airplanes. They're made of composites, which is a laminating process. So we're gonna take a look at how they do it. So let's get started. We're gonna to go to the composite shop here directly, but one thing I wanna show you is that how diamonds are built hell for strong and why they have almost zero incidence of post-crash fire. These are the stub spars, and these spars go all the length of the wing, and then they meet in the middle of the airplane. I'll show you some details on that later, and that's what carries the flight loads. But diamond, to protect the fuel, slides it down in between this cavity here, between the two spars, which protect it in the event of a crash, and the tanks themselves are welded aluminum. So the fuel is extremely well protected, probably the best in general aviation. So we'll see some of those details, and now it's off to the composite shop. Uh, this is our automated uh, fiber impregnating machine. Uh, the machine will, uh, will select the fabric and impregnate the, the, fiber, the carbon or fiberglass as chosen by the operator to the correct ratio. So based on the density of the fabric, there's a different level of uh, uh, resin content that will be uh, sprayed onto each fabric. The fabric runs on a back of carrier film, a plastic film, that will make it easier for the, uh, for the production workers to handle the fabric. Uh, so here we are in the Composite Operations Department. We're laminating a DA-40 upper wing shell. It's uh, all composite. It's a sandwich construction. Uh, the preparation starts with mold preparation and then in-mold primer, and then uh, the laminating starts. The, wor uh, the workers here will follow a sequence on a work order and, uh, and follow the drawing sequence that says which layers to, uh, to laminate first. You know, being a globe-trotting aviation journalist and all, I'm often asked what kind of airplane I would buy if money were no object and I could buy anything I wanted. I never know quite how to answer that, 
but on my short list is one of these. This is a DA62, fresh off the assembly line here in London. And I've been over this airplane very carefully. The paint is freaking perfect. Well, except it's not. It's got some minor blemishes in it, which every production airplane has. The paint guy here at Diamond is Sean Kelly. He's gonna tell us how they do the paint in the first place and how they fix any blemishes. These particular airframes, our DA-40, uh, have just come from composites. Uh, at this point, they come to paint as is. At, uh, from there, we do all the bodywork, uh, fix any imperfections, uh, blend in the composite seams, uh, get it ready for primer, sand the surface, and then at that point, it goes into the prime booth. Currently, our paint system, the, the next stage after, after prep for prime, the primer is an anti-static primer. It is carbon-based. Uh, we use it to help dissipate the static charge uh, from a composite aircraft. Uh, what that'll do is it'll, it'll slowly dissipate the static charge out to the static wicks that are on all trailing edges of tips, stabilizers, uh, and rudder. Uh, at that point, uh, we measure prior to paint. We measure the static uh, dissipation of it with our mega ohm meter, uh, giving us a rating, uh, pass or fail. And at that point, we, it's deemed fit to, to proceed with paint. Now we have color options uh, on our DA62 model uh, with the upgrade in the resin system allowing for a higher temperature uh, retention. Uh, that allows us to put specific colors that have been tested um, based on heat retention as well. Allows us to apply colors uh, in, in designated areas uh, and also allows us to have a little more option as far as not only just uh, two-tone paint jobs uh, and standard uh, single stage, but also uh, custom paint jobs as well. Uh, in most cases, they're small blemishes. Usually it'll involve just wet sanding and polishing. Uh, in some cases, we do require spot repairs, uh, meaning that we will have to, to isolate the area to paint, paint it, re-clear it, uh, blend it out, and then polish. Now, once the airplane comes out of the paint shop, it moves on to final assembly here. There are six stations, and a certain number of tests happen at each one culminating all the way down there at the end where the finished airplane is inspected, ready for flight, tested, and brought back in and given a final inspection before it's delivered to the customer. So let's take a look at how they put these things together. This is our first station on our DA-40 assembly line. At this point, the, the operators will look at the configuration sheet of the aircraft specifications and will start to detail the aircraft in that, in that way. We start to install con, uh, control surfaces, our lightning protection tubes and all of our foils and start to set some of the rigging in. At this stage we put in our rudder pedals and we'll start to in install our cables and get them ready for uh, rigging for our next, uh, next assembly station. Our aircraft are placed on rotators for the ease of, of our operators so that during the assembly they can be rotated to work in any configuration. Our next operation is station three at this point, the landing gear is installed. The landing gear is installed based on the customer configuration, whether it's a, a, a tall strut with a Parker wheel or a Behringer configuration. We also see that we have our nose landing gear on. Our stabilizer is installed. Uh, our doors are installed at this operation, as well as our windows. And you can see we start to get our, our elevators, elevator uh, configuration installed. We have our control rods that are built in-house, uh, right from raw material, and we get all of our rigging set up for when the wings are installed. This is our next station on the assembly line. As we come here, our avionics team starts to get our remote stack in and gets ready for the iPanel installation. We will also, at this point, install the Austro engine or the Lycoming based on the model of DA-40 that we're, that we're producing. So this aircraft here is at our final assembly station. At this point, the aircraft is inspected by both our quality control personnel as, as well as our flight line operators. The aircraft is then closed up with the interior, the eye panel cover, uh, propellers already been installed and torqued. Our engine is complete and we're ready to deliver this to flight line for them to do their ground run and, and first flight. Here in the avionics department in Canada, we produce 
all of the wiring for our airframes along with all of the instrument panels for us and for uh, our friends in Austria as well. So we do the DA40NG like homing DA62 and the DA42 as well. Our builders will take a raw piece of sheet metal and do what you're seeing here, which is pre-building it up, getting it ready for the instrument panel harness and the avionic harness. And they will install the instrument panel harness on here, wire it completely up and get it ready for the avionic harness, which will mate on top of it, tie right in there, solder in, connect in, and then it will go into a testing station, which we have right over here where we hook the instrument panel up and we will do a full function check on every circuit breaker, every switch. And then in tune after that, once that passes, we will install all of the LRUs and the GDUs into the units and do a full software load to ensure that there is no mispins or miswires in there and that all the units before it hits the assembly line are good. As we work our way through the center of the shop, we have a series of boards down the middle. And in those boards is where we produce the I-panel harnesses and the avionic harnesses for all the models of the airframes. And as we work our way down, you can see one of the finished avionic harnesses here, pending inspection. And then as we pan out to those boards there, there is some instrument panel harnesses on the go. We have one here for our DA40 like homing and then one here for the DA62. As you can see, it's a fairly large board, fairly complex, about 150 plus terminations that end up on this board. Uh, once it is crimped on the board, it is terminated and then it is hooked up to a machine uh, built by Cirrus, uh, not the manufacturer Cirrus, but a uh, cable tester and it is hooked up and every single wire on that board is then function checked and tested for continuity for shorts, opens, uh, to make sure that there is no miswires. So a DA40 panel from start to finish for a builder sitting and building it himself. Once he has the harnesses supplied to him, we can do it in about 23 hours for a fully trained person. You know, every manufacturing plant on the planet has to have some kind of production tracking system. That's how they know if they're being efficient or inefficient at building stuff. This screen behind me is how Diamond does it here in the London factory, and Jeffrey Smallwood is going to explain how it works. The production information system here at Diamond is used to plan and capture as much information as we possibly can about each aircraft as it moves through our production system. What this does is it gives us the information that we need to focus our continuous improvement activity on and ultimately deliver a higher quality aircraft for our customers. The production of each aircraft is broken down into thousands of individual steps based on the option level as chosen by our customer and the model that we're building. For each of those steps, our team members are required to digitally sign into the work step with their employee badge as the plane moves through each individual workstation. This allows us to digitally capture a history of each individual aircraft's uh, history and work step. We know which team member performed what work, what specific actions they took, how long it took, and the specific materials and uh, lot specific items and components are used in that process. This system also gives us a, a visual indication of how the daily schedule is progressing. The three circle screen that you saw previously gives the team lead a detailed real-time picture of how the, team, how the build is progressing. This allows us to dynamically plan our day should any abnormality arise. Ultimately, the information generated by this system is analyzed by the operations department, engineering, quality, and design to help us pinpoint specific areas for improvement with the goal of delivering an overall better aircraft. Okay, so we've seen the complete production process from beginning to the end. Uh, this is a finished aircraft here. The final step of the process involves the sales team doing a very thorough cosmetic walk around. Any deficiencies are noted. The uh, final detailing team will then tackle those deficiencies, give the aircraft a thorough cleaning and wipe down, and then the aircraft is finally ready for customer acceptance.